Node.js, where I JavaScript on the backend and harness the power of full-stack web development all with one programming language. It used to be that JavaScript would only run in the browser until this guy showed up and changed everything. When the browser wants to connect to a website, say youtube.com, the web browser would send out a request to the YouTube server and the YouTube server would send back a response with HTML attached to it is CSS and JavaScript. Now the server itself would be running a programming language like PHP, C Sharp or even Java. And the reason why JavaScript could not run on the server is because it was born and raised in the browser and was very limited and couldn't access things like a database or even the file system. But instead of getting into the history details of the what's why's and how's, let's just get into the coding because the best way to learn something is to try it out yourself. And in this video I'm going to show you how to build your very own server from scratch. And if you enjoy my content, like this video and subscribe to the channel as I'll be releasing a mini-series on how to build a REST API with Node.js, MongoDB and Express, complete with user authentication. But before we even get into that, the first important question is, how exactly do we run a Node.js application? And the answer is just like any other programming language, you download it and install it. Go ahead and visit nodejs.org, link in the description below, and there you choose the version which is recommended for most users, and in the case of my current date that would be version 14. Once installed, go ahead open VS Code, and open the terminal and cd into the directory where you want to write your JavaScript. And from there, go ahead and write your very first node command, and that is npm init. And on a side note, what I'll go ahead and do is add the dash y flag, just to answer yes to all the questions that will be asked when building this node project. And you should see this package.json file show up in your project folder. Now we'll talk more about what's inside of this file, but for now, just go ahead and create a file and call it index.js. Now inside of that file, go ahead and write console.log, hello, node, and then, inside of the terminal, go ahead and write node and then the path of the JavaScript file, which in this case, it's index.js. You should see hello node show up in the terminal, and congratulations, because you just built your very first node app. Now, printing out stuff to the terminal is fine, but that's not why we're using Node.js. Which brings us to the next part of this video, the global object and node modules. Now, if you want to understand what the global object is, the simplest answer is it's the equivalent of the window object in vanilla JavaScript, with some differences such as we don't have access to the DOM, as the DOM is an intrinsic part of the front end, but all in all, everything in Node.js resides on the global object. And one of the first modules we're going to look at is the FS node module. Now, FS stands for file system, and from its name, it's a way to allow our Node app to read or write files to and from the file system. So how to use it, I'll go ahead and create a constant called FS, and I'll set that equal to require FS. Now this require fs is pretty much the equivalent of import in ES6 syntax, however it is not supported in node version 14. Go ahead and download version 16 if this is too confusing for you. Now underneath require I'm going to go ahead and call the fs module and do dot write file sync and then we'll open and close two brackets. Now the first argument is the path and the file name of the file that we actually want to write into and that is a relative path meaning it is relative to your index.js file. And the second argument will be what you want to write in that particular file. Now go ahead and run your node app from the terminal and as you can see I have a text file in my project folder with the text of if you're gonna drink, drink coffee. Now if I want to read the file it should be pretty much the exact same process where I'll do fs then dot read file sync and then the first argument will be the path and the name of the text file and the second argument will depend on the character encoding and in this case it will be utf slash 8. Go ahead and paste the entire line inside of console.log and you should see the content of the file displayed in the terminal. Now just for fun, I will remove the second argument and you would see that it would print out a bunch of numbers. Now these numbers are nothing more than just a buffer and a buffer is just another word for saying that this data is not understood by the node app which is why you'd have to specify the kind of data that you'd be working with in the second argument. Now you might be wondering how the hell do I remember all of this and the short answer is you don't because Google is your best friend and nobody really writes into text files with Node.js. So we'll talk about another node module or package or also known as a framework called Express, which is pretty much the easiest way of turning your node app into a server. But before we even get into Express, I need to explain to you one last thing and that is where Express comes from, which is the next part of this video, NPM. Now if you've been following along with this video, NPM was installed in your computer when you installed Node. And you could think of NPM as the App Store. The only difference is if you decide to build a node module, Apple wouldn't take 30% commission from your packages. Now I say packages because NPM NPM is an acronym for Node Package Manager. You can head over to the NPM website and search for the package that you actually want to use in your project. And here you'd find great documentation about the package that you want to use. And since we're going to be using Express from NPM, that pretty much means it's a third party module built by awesome developers like yourself and we'd have to install it. So go and head over to the terminal and from the path of your project, run NPM install Express. And once all the files have been downloaded, you'd notice that there'd be a Node Modules folder inside of your project folder and you'd also 
also find a new package lock JSON file. Now the package lock JSON file is beyond the scope of this video. However, this node modules folder, you shouldn't be touching it even if you know exactly what you're doing. And that's because it contains all the code for NPM packages that you'd be downloading for your project. And you really wouldn't want to be changing them as you constantly need to update those packages when you ship your application off to production. So to keep things simple, just do not touch that folder. But instead, click on the package.json file and inside of it, you should find a dependencies object and inside of that, you should find express and then the version of express that you have installed. And that is because this package.json file is keeping track of your entire application as it grows. So for now, let's just go and head over to the index.js file and try using the express package. Go ahead and require express into a constant and what express returns is purely a function. So underneath that, I'll go ahead and do const app is equal to express and provoke the function. Now there are multiple methods that reside on app and we'll explore all those methods in detail in a future video. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and start up the server and I'll do that by typing in app.listen and app.listen takes in two arguments. The first being the port number that I want to listen into and the second being a function where you could for example log out to the console the port number that you're running on. I'll go ahead and listen to port 3000 and head over to the browser to see what happened. Now if I go ahead and search for localhost 3000 the first thing you would notice is that it would say cannot get and that is because the browser cannot get anything from the server that is running on localhost 3000. So what I would have to do is provide it with something that it should receive from the server. So what I'll do is go over to the terminal and hit Control C to shut down the server and then on top of app.listen I'm going to use another method on express and that is app.get. Now app.get also takes in two arguments and this is one of those methods that you would constantly be using when using express. So the first argument would take in the route and in this case I'll just go ahead and put a forward slash indicating that this is the home page. For example if I put forward slash about that would be the about page and forward slash help that would be the help page. Now the second argument will take in a function. Now this function would also have two arguments inside of it, the first being the request and the second being the response. And again, we'll get into further detail with the request and the response, but for now, all we care about is just the response. So I'll go ahead and grab that response argument and do dot send, and then between the brackets, I'll go ahead and open and close a h1 tag, and inside of that, I'll write hello express. Now, if I go ahead and run up the server with node index.js, inside of the browser, you should see a h1 tag that says hello express. Now that's cool and all, but there are two major problems here. The first being I cannot write an entire website inside of that response.send function. And the second being each time I want to make a minor change on the server, I would have to hit control C and then run the same node index.js command over and over again, just to view the minor changes on the browser. So to fix that whole reloading issue that we have, we're going to install another NPM package. And this dependency is going to be a dev dependency. Now a dev dependency means a package that is only included in the project when it's in development. After production, that package will not be included in the app. So I'll shut down the server and run npm install nodemon and I'll add to it dash dash save dash dev to install it as a dev dependency. Now once installed inside of the package.json file you'd find dependencies would still have express but dev dependencies will have nodemon and then the version of nodemon that is installed. And now I'll start up the server again, but this time I'll write nodemon index.js. Now each time I make a change, I hit control S to save and the server instantaneously refreshes with the new changes. Okay, so that's one problem out the way, but what about that response.send with just one h1 tag? I clearly want to serve up all my HTML, CSS and client-side JavaScript assets. So what I'll do, and just to make things simple, is I'll go ahead and create a public folder inside of my node project and then inside of that public folder, I'll go ahead and create two HTML files, one index.html and the second about.html. Now the content of these HTML files will be pretty much the same. The only difference is the index.html file will have a h1 tag with home and a link to the about page. And then the about page would have a h1 tag with about and then a link to the index.html page. And I'll also go ahead and load into the index.html a JavaScript file. And this JavaScript file will have one line of code in it and that would be alert hello server. Now my goal is simple. I want these three files to be served up locally through my express server. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and comment out the app.get method and then I'll call another method and that is app.use. Then inside of the app.use method I'll go ahead and write express.static and then inside of that I'll go ahead and write between parentheses public. And that pretty much means use whatever's inside of the public directory as static files starting from index.html. And whenever I have HTML loaded it would also load the CSS and also the JavaScript. So now 
Now, if I go to the localhost 3000, the first thing I'll get is an annoying pop-up from the JavaScript saying, hello server. Then when I click on OK, I'll see my H1 tag and the about link. And when I click on the about link, I'll get to the about page. And from the about page, I'll be able to go back to the index page. And now I could simply start up these pages with HTML and CSS, but this is not a HTML or CSS video, so there's no point in me showing that. Now stay tuned, because in the upcoming videos, we're going to be building a REST API. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching.